here at Kongteng University, Thailand, and I'm going to be your host. The aim of this session is to provide a platform for interaction between the applicant and the mentors so that the challenges faced by the applicant can be appropriately guided. So I would like to encourage the applicant to feel free and both spread their challenges and concerns. Applicants should also feel free to write on our chat comment as we are going to have a session. This session is going to be in three parts. Number one is interactive session with the applicant, which is going to take probably five minutes. Then interactive session with the mentors, probably 10 minutes, then followed by Q&A session. From the side of the applicant, we have, from the side of the mentors, we have Dr. Abdul Hamid B. Olabi, and we have Dr. Abdul Qadir Yusuf Megoro, and Dr. Uh, Muhammad Chutiani. Then from the side of the applicant, we have Mustafa Suleiman, Ibrahim Abdullahi, Amini A. Majid Salisi, Zaitun Bakari, Abbas Saini, Gali Mansur, and many more that join us today. So I'm going to have to hand over to you to carry on with the session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mubarak. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to this uh, webinar organized by Gamji Educational and Mentorship Forum. Uh, as you all know, the title of the webinar is the Hunt. Uh, a discussion on the journey about the struggling applicants. So this is the second webinar in a series, Scholarship Hunt. I think some of you may remember our first series where we uh, host uh, uh, more than uh, like um, successful uh, uh, successful uh, scholars from over 10 countries where they come here and share with us their experience and then share some script of their success. But today's webinar is about the applicants. So we are going to see it from the applicant perspective. What are the uh, struggles and what are the challenges they are facing in while trying to apply for uh, various scholarship opportunities uh, around the globe? And luckily we have some uh, dedicated uh, applicants who are here with us, then we we'll, uh, hear from them their stories and then uh, some scholars uh, mentors and then some scholarship committee members will hear us at. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry, please. Okay. Sorry for interrupting. Please, sorry for interrupting. Can you? Uh, there is someone that is complaining. He's not hearing us. So can you please talk with? He's not what I think. He's he's he's, he's, he's not from hearing. Side, so, so I was thinking, like, I maybe think. if you can talk. We can talk with one of the applicants, we can unmute him and hear from him whether he's listening to us clearly. Mm, okay. Uh, Dr. Chuitami, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear everyone clearly. So I think it's from his angle. Yeah. Term, but, um, okay. So so I think without wasting much of our time, we will directly enter into the session. So as our host mentioned, our first session is the interaction with the uh, uh, applicant where we will hear from them and our first applicant is uh, Mustafa Sleiman who is uh, graduated from Federal University Duse where he obtained his uh, bachelor degree in chemistry and he he held from uh, Kano State. So uh, Mustafa Sleiman are you here with us? Mustafa Suleiman, you can. He's muted. Can you, can you hear me? Can you, you hear like me, please? Yes. Yes, okay. you can hear my me. My name is Mustafa Suleiman, and I obtained my first degree. Why you say I obtained my degree from Federal University Duse, where I studied chemistry, and I graduated at the top one person of my class with first class honor in twenty. 21, where I directly moved to Alikima University, where I did my national youth service 
in Ali Ikeme University in Lorin. So yeah, this is the thank you very much. So I would like to because it's going to be an interactive session. So I would like to know from the beginning what makes you want to apply for scholarship, Mustafa? Actually, after my graduation, I don't have much intention in scholarship, even though I was thrilled my main, by many of my lecturers. But there is one of my mentors who also graduated from my school, he is currently now in the US. So when he saw my result, he said that, wow, uh, this kind of result, you're supposed to start applying for a scholarship, you should not rely on the Nigerian universities like this. So I started applying, but I was not much motivated till when I saw one of my uh, colleagues, which we graduated in the same year from the same class. He secured a fully funded scholarship from France, in France. So this is the major thing that uh, really motivated me. Mm, OK, OK. So, so 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 far how many scholarships have you applied um so far i applied for like 15 scholarships uh wow. even though majority of them are us based scholarship i applied for direct phd a okay. us based scholarship you know when you had bsc they can just give you direct phd so mm. most of them almost more than 10 are us based scholarships I see, I see, I see. So can you briefly tell us then what are the challenges you are facing while the applying for the uh, scholarship? Like what are the challenges and what are the problems you, you face? Initially at the novice stage, uh, some of the challenges are more of like um, home-based challenges because when that my mentor encouraged me to start applying when i introduced it at home because i don't have much enough source of fund so i talked to them like uh, maybe please can you pay for me so that i can secure this scholarship can you pay the this thing the international passport fee for me so it's just like they don't believe in it because they don't have any kind of testimony or they never see someone that secures such kind of opportunity so mm. till when i started my nyc i used my own money and obtained the passport and even before i obtained the passport i spent like six months because i don't know the kind of things they are doing there is later someone told me that I have to pay like uh, maybe some kind of bribe. It's just like a bribe. So I have to pay some kind of supplement before I got the passport. So this is one of the challenges that I think are very inflating and I'm very disappointed for it. Yes, and I think so many are facing some uh, challenges. So you said you apply like to more than 15 scholarships. Can you tell us what happened with the applications? Yes, um, most of them, unfortunately, most of them I got rejected, especially those U.S. I got rejected and I got admitted in one of the U.S. schools, but with no funding. And uh, I was waitlisted in two of them. Okay. So, so far, there is no uh, successful application from your side. Yes, yes, there is no so far, honestly. So, so, what do you think is wrong with the application? I mean, is it from you or from, like, you mean, like, from your qualifications? You said you have, you are uh, one of the top students when you graduated. So, what do you think exactly is the problem? Um, at the initial stage, I think something may be wrong with my statement of purpose and some other issues um, but i later quickly detected the problem and resolved it but more of recent i think uh the thing that i'm thinking that contributed to what me rejected is not having one of the profile ielts or any of the english requirement and we are in 
also and the GRE maybe flat back to some of the challenges because um, I prepared to write that IELTS. I even read for it. I really, pre I'm, I was really prepared for it then, but mm -hmm. I was restricted at home from writing it. You know, when you are not one that will sponsor oh. the thing. So it's just like they didn't believe it much like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think not having some of those exams that will be an added advantage are some of the things that contributed even though those us scholarships you know now they waived uh, those, those ilts and TOEFL. when you are from nigeria nigeria is now included among the uh, english-speaking country even some of the few universities that didn't include nigeria you find out that once you studied from a university in which uh, the 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 language of instruction is english they is just like um you, you are entitled for it but i believe that will be an added advantage if to say i have it and the gre gre is no longer a requirement since the covid 19 as they are saying but in some of the school you find out that they will just say if you have gre it may be an added advantage submit it and if you don't have it you should not mind so I think those are the things that will contribute into competition because if other applicants are having it and me not having it, so it's, it's just like they are leaving me behind. So I think these are the things. Yes, I see, I see. Wow, so that's uh, a quite for uh, challenges. So I think I will leave you uh, now, Mr. Suleiman. Thank you very much for, for sharing this uh, experience. Uh, that you, 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 you have. And I hope through this kind of uh, program, inshallah, you finally get your uh, chance and get your opportunity for looking at uh, scholarship. Thank you very much once again, Mustafa. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. So, uh, our next uh, uh, speaker is uh, Ibrahim Abdullahi, who is a uh, Hail from Kaduna State, and he graduated uh, with B.Sc. Botany from Ahmadiyya University, Zaria. So, uh, Brian Abdullah, are you here with us? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. So, we have heard from our former speaker some of the challenges that he faced. So, can you quickly also share with us what are the uh, challenges? Who at first. How many scholarships did you did you apply so far? Okay, uh, good afternoon from here. My name is Ibrahim Abdullahi from Aduna State. For the scholarship, actually, I applied for the several scholarships, especially US. I think on US alone, I I sent more than uh, seventy cold emails, apart from the single application that I have met. Because I understand that most user schools, uh, their, their programs are research basis. So, supervisor sometimes has a grant that he will advertise positions from his lab, then he will take students. And I had mostly from mentors, like, this is the most easiest way to secure admission in the US. So, that's why I lay emphasis on that. I send cold emails, cold emails, a lot of more than 70 cold emails to the parents who are to the parent schools. But at the end, I managed to get one supervisor that agreed to supervise my work at the University of Nebraska. He even sent me, uh, he even had a Zoom session like this with him, uh, one page full Monday, I think. He just he introduced me to what he's doing in his lab and what I wanted to do in his lab, something like that. So after the, the formal Zoom session, he said I should just go ahead and apply for admission from his school. But before I applied the admission, then he said, I, I already I already checked the requirement. They they, they, they had they require GRE. So I told him during the Zoom session that I don't have GRE requirement. So he said, uh, no problem. They don't consider GRE because of this COVID nineteen. But he will talk to the graduate coordinator, graduate school. So after he talked to them, they said, no. If you don't have GRE, they will not give me the admission. He even told me the kind of mails that they are sending with the graduate school. But they said, no. If you don't have GRE, I should I, they will not give me admission. So that's how I lost the opportunity for the university. And the GRE actually is very, very expensive. I think it's more than 100,000. So here in Nigeria, you see, it's a lot of money. 
while ILT is one of the most of the school they don't require it. Even if required, it, you can request for a uh, medium of instruction letter from your former school. Then I applied for Erasmus Mundus two programs, applied ecohydrology and ecotoxicology. But I made it to the applied ecohydrology to the wet list. But at the end, I didn't make it. Mastercard, uh, University of Edinburgh, Mastercard, University of Cambridge, like this, like this. But up to now, as here, we did not succeed, it, but we are still pushing. Right now, I'm planning mm -hmm. to MSC here in ABU area so that I will keep pushing for the scholarship. Even if you don't come here, after my master's PhD might be available because most of the programs are PhDs, research basis. So PhD has more funding compared to MSc programs. So that's why I said, let me just start the MSc here, so that I should not waste a lot of time. Maybe after the MSc, then we'll continue for the PhD. We are also building, yes. uh, continue to building our profiles. Mm. Wow, that's uh, quite a challenge, but I, I understand one thing the former speaker also talked about most of his application is in the United States. And you also, you made mention is the United States is like you, yeah, okay, maybe I think when uh, our uh, Abel Dr. Dr. Chukia came for the advices, I think he will try to to address this so that uh, like the application would be able to concentrate only in one country like there are a lot of countries so you can like try to uh, diverse your your application so i think i will uh, you already like run off all the questions so what i will ask you is uh how, how is mentorship for you while looking for your applications like what how do you think like uh, uh the mentorship like someone who uh is guiding you or people who are guiding you how help you uh, that to your applications yes uh, all i can say is actually for this scholarship journey if you don't have a mentor that is almost 100 percent sure that you can you will not you will not get it right because it's required a lot of things you are essay document the interview it from you even the scholarship what you need to apply how you are applying the schools something like that also yeah you you, you will need a reference letter from your schools your free that you are going to watch your academic performance and the research basis. Also, I understand most of these schools, they don't, they don't only uh, emphasis on, 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 C, on CGPA. They require someone that can write, like uh, writing skills, research experience, because that's what you are going to do in the uni, in the graduate school. A lot of papers uh, from publications, research work, field work, like these um, data analysis, uh, Python, R program, and, and the rest. Mm. And most of us we even have these uh, basic things. That's because uh, most, like, me, like me, during my undergraduate, I don't even have any have any idea of applying for scholarship. I just say, let me try and graduate at least with two one. I don't even know whether I, I want it for scholarship or, or, or whatever. So that's why how, after we finish our university, that's one. That's how we think. Let, let's 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 try this thing. Because I have met one one guy. He's now doing his PhD. Uh, uh, from US, even before his service here, he has he has secured two fully uh, three fully funded scholarships in US because even during their undergraduate, they already know what they want. They, what they want, they already start working for it. So this thing is not like a one day job. You have to sacrifice yourselves and be ready for it. But most of mm. us here, we don't, we don't even have that opportunity. So mentorship is very is is very important. I can remember I connect with you uh, some years back in LinkedIn. Why well, give me your number? Then we start chatting on WhatsApp. So I think you are the, almost my first mentor that uh, offered my eyes for these opportunities. Then I all I I I again some people uh, again apart from you. So be, uh, actually, they, you cannot make it just here to this college journey if you don't have a mentor because it requires a lot of hard work. That's, that's, that's true. So thank you very much. I think I will. Uh, leave you here now, Ibrahim Abdullahi. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience thank uh, you. with us. And, and we will quickly move to the next uh, speaker, which is uh, uh, Abdullahi uh, oh, Aminu Adani Majid. He hailed from Kano State and he obtained his uh, uh, bachelor degree in education biology. Aminu Adomaji, are you here with us? Yes, sir, buddy. Um, I'm here with you. Okay. So you already hear like some of the challenges that uh, 
some of your fellow applicants uh, face during their application. So can you quickly also share with us what are your challenges? Are they, is it the same with this or is it quite different? Yeah, actually, I can say that the challenges I faced, uh, some of the challenges are similar, well, some of the challenges are not similar. For instance, uh, I have a challenge to request for my recommendation letter. I have, I have applied to so many different applications. So, you know, it is stressful to be meeting your, your, your lecturers for always wanting asking them to write a recommendation letter for you on behalf of a social -so -so application that you are looking for. Sometimes you might even not hear from them until when you go to their office personally and talk to them. So some even lecturers won't respond to you, you know, and uh, and some even when they are trying to give out the recommendation letter on your behalf, they try to give the information very scanty that they doesn't elaborate much things because i believe uh, this recommendation letter is the is one among the fundamental aspect of an of a good application the recommendation letter needs to carry some parts maybe like your leadership experience your research experience your good command of english so you know some some of our lecturers you know don't have this experience of writing the recommendation letter or some are not even willing to help you out regarding the recommendation letter so in the process of explaining to them okay so this recommendation letter should carry so, so, so content so that it can boost the profile of my application you know some will say yes and some will say no this is one aspect of the recommendation letter and more also i realized that uh for me to apply for an application into a space school school program or anybody oh. I realized that I have been missing one thing, which is also uh, fundamental for me to make a look on it. Maybe uh, I would say like the objective of that particular program, if it is a program, or what are the things this 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 program people are doing in their universities? You know, I have to tally my profile with maybe the objective of the program or the, uh, the 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 program and make a look on the profile review of of the lecturers in the in the in the, in the school so i think these are some of the challenges i face which i think inshallah I'll, i have made some adjustments whereby i apply yeah. to other schools yeah. uh, if by god willing inshallah things will change up yeah, I, see, I see i see so so by now how many scholarships uh, have you applied I have applied to like uh, 15 scholarships. Wow. Yeah, 15 scholarships. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of these 15, um, uh, there is an awaiting decision of like six now. You too, you. I'm, I'm, I'm all these 15, yeah. is it from the US or is from the. No, no, I have, uh, I have never applied to, to US scholarships. Okay. I uh, I think uh, among the my application I applied to to Chinese university whereby the program coordinator gave me a link to make a search uh, and uh, on the on the profile of the of the department and seek for a supervisor but unfortunately the uh, what I, the, the, the difficulty I found there was you know these chinese lecturers find it difficult to respond to your mail i have sent a mail to them to like 15 of the supervisors but there's no response from any of them yeah. so as a result i could not make it mm -hmm. but i've never applied to us i applied to uh, king fight now i applied to uh, uh Fu, which it was recently mm -hmm. advertised on your on, on, on your profile and, and on the Facebook, but I've never applied to USA. I, I see, I see. So quickly, I'll go to the last question is some, you know, sometimes when uh, people try like their love like so many times and they have failed, then they tend to give up on the, on their dreams. And then, so have you given up? No, I haven't given up. I haven't mm. given up and I've put it in my mind. This is the starting point. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's, that's very yeah, this is yeah. the starting point because uh, I had it from others. People have applied more than me and they have gotten it at the end. So if I look at the journey where I started from, you know, since from my final year, uh, a friend was able to secure the uh, uh, fully funded scholarship. So I even write the the the, the TOEFL exam. I bought my passport, request for my trans- transcripts, and so on and so forth. So the energy there, you know, it should not be wasted. I think I should carry on moving. Yeah, I should I should yeah. carry on moving. I I will get it because people are getting it. So the only thing is I should keep improving my yeah. profile. That's what I believe. If I can make my profile much better every t- every time, I think I will make it one day. That's true. That's hundred percent correct. As long as you are applying, it doesn't matter how many times you apply. Even yeah. if it is hundred times, thousand times, believe me, one day you will get it. So thank you very much, uh, Adil yeah. and Mumaji, for sharing your your journey with us. Thank you very much. So I will move to our next uh, speaker, Salusu Salusu Idris. Uh, he is from Zamparasit and uh, he obtained his uh, Bachelor in Biochemistry and then currently he is a uh, MSc student of Biochemistry from uh, Modibello University, uh, Zaria. So Salusu Idris, are you here with us? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Buhari. I hope I'm audible. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. So I think for you, yeah. your question will be unique because uh, I know you have some uh, some kind of unique experience with uh, which I think is really uh, useful to share with our audience so that uh, I think it's a common mistake that mostly we used to do it in, especially in northern Nigeria. So. Uh, I would like you to introduce your, your your problem. That is the the problem that you have with your names, which which hinder you from getting a lot of uh, opportunities. I think that would be interesting to to hear. Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy that I joined. So with respect to question, uh, I I have a problem with my name, which is the issue of surname. I'm Salisu, and my father's name is Idris. So unfortunately, uh, I'm using Salisu Idris, Salisu my name as an Idris as surname, which I believe that is what is general for a lot of us in the North. So this year, I was rejected for a scholarship because they are asking that my surname, my father's surname should be the same with me. That means his also surname should be Idris which is not what we have here in the north. I reach out to a lot of people and ask them if uh, their name is like that in the north and it is not. So if in a simple term, the what I want to say is that uh, the scholarship is asking that my father and I should have the same surname, which I believe a lot of people in the north doesn't have that. So to respond to that, I was able now to fix the problem to go to Nin office and rectify my father's surname and make it Idrisu as well. So I have my explanation. Is okay. Yes, it's, it's very okay, but I would like to shed some light on it. You know, mostly uh, in, in northern Nigeria, most people, they have three names mostly mm. and some people they have two names like my name is buhari law muhammad and mostly people used to confuse with surname first name and other's name or middle name so mostly when it's asked surname so most people they used to write their father's name so that's mostly where the problem is where the confusion is mostly the surname is your family name if you don't have a family name, then your last name, which is your grandfather's name, then should be your surname, not your father's name. Your father's name mostly is the middle name and your first name is your name. So mostly we used to mix these things up. Uh, if you put your father's name and then you put surname and then another document, for example, in your passport, you mix it up while in your degree, that you get, 
it's a different one then mostly mostly these international schools they don't they don't accept that so your names it supposed to be match that's why for example in korean scholarship when you apply then uh they, they require your parents identity also so that they will match the names so the moment they see the, the names didn't match then you will be automatically uh disqualified so i think this this common mistake and this common problem that we used to have it's uh really people need to be careful with the names not even you i've known like several students who have the same problem they they were rejected from a lot of opportunities just because of this mix up of the of the names thank you actually for sharing this uh, unique uh, experience so i think i will ask you one more question then we move to the next one so how far uh, what what is your current status now with regard to the scholarship applications so i can i can call myself uh, still an applicant a prospective scholar and do i'm waiting for decisions <laughs> and, See, honestly, I can say that, yeah, as I said, I'm a prospective scholar. I'm waiting for decision. Still, finger did not cross, but I'm hopeful, inshallah, one day I, I will share my testimony here. Yeah. Mm, so, inshallah, inshallah. The is it's not easy at all. It's not something that you will get in one go. It has <laughs> its own challenge. And I always said to some people, uh, for me, this scholarship is more difficult than, than a college diploma. The trauma, mm. the frustrations, a lot of it. But what is always keeping me to be doing is, apart from that, I want to get that scholarship. The journey is also making me to become better and better, always learning these skills, learning this, learning this, which is also improving my skills. So it's not just about getting the scholarship it's also about personal and academic development so the journey is worth doing that's, and i will keep that's very that, sure. that's very true that's very true inshallah we are looking forward to one day you guys will come back and share your success story with us the way you share this struggle with us also <laughs> thank you very much uh Salis Idris, for sharing your experience and we will quickly move to the next uh speaker so our next uh, speaker is Zaytun Snusi uh, Bakabe. She's from uh, UOB State, and uh, uh, she obtained her bachelor from economics, and now she's a uh, uh, MSc student of economics from Bayer University, Kano. And then she's also a graduate assistant in Federal University, uh, Geshua. So Zaytun, are you here with us? Assalamu alaikum, yeah, I'm with you. Wa alaikum, wa alaikum assalam, okay, thank you. So uh, Zaytun, you, you already like uh, uh, a graduate uh, assistant, which I think for you, like uh, securing further education is some kind of mandatory. So, so can you share with us also your, your, your struggle or challenges in finding scholarship opportunities? Yeah, actually during my master's application, I faced challenges in GRE test and English propensity test. That's the major problem that I faced. But now, Alhamdulillah, of course, I have already solved the issue because whenever they ask me about my my English proficiency test, I used to upload my work results and what I got in my English language. So for now, at my PhD level, the only problem that I'm facing is the proposal because each institution has its own templates. Some they may ask you not less than 15 pages, and some will ask you not less than, not less than four pages. So this really <laughs> an issue because, mm -hmm. you know, you cannot gather all the ideas in just four pages. So we need guidance yeah, so that we true. can be able to come up with a better proposal. 
That, that, that's true. So, so I see you uh, currently fashion your masters in the UK. So you, how, how, when you graduated, have you tried to apply for like a scholarship in a, a international scholarship, or you just decided to go for masters, or maybe you find it difficult to secure scholarship? That's why you decided to just go for masters uh, at home. Yeah, I started applying scholarships since 2018. That's immediately after our convocation. I applied for my transcript and I get it. So I started applying, applying, applying till now at PhD level. I, see, I, see. Yes, I have applied so many scholarships, but in UK, Australia, China, Asian countries, even here in Nigeria, local scholarship I applied for. Mm. I see. So, so when you were applying, do you have a mentor who like is guiding you? Yes, I do have a mentor. One is my brother. Um, he's now in UK. Dr. Abdul Karim, and also my lecturer, Dr. Ali Yunura Kabuga, is also a PTDF uh, um, beneficiary. He's not in UK also. Wow, so that's, uh, that's uh, very nice to, to hear. So I think the last question is, what, what is your current status now? Like, uh, 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 if you get another chance, then you will abandon the masters that you are doing currently, or you have to finish first, then maybe you will seek for PhD. Yeah. I'm about to finish, inshallah, because now I'm waiting mm. for my internal examination. Oh, that's understandable. So, and I have applied another scholarship that is Temp uh, Stempedium Hungry Corium Scholarship, the bilateral scholarship with Nigerian government. And I have passed the technical stage, mm -hmm. and I was even nominated by Nigerian government. The only problem that now I'm facing is that due to, I wasn't aware of the application, so one of my a friend called me and asked me to apply for it and it almost the deadline was approaching then so before i start checking the available schools all the schools have closed their application except uh, Covenant uh, university of the first so i wasn't aware of after you apply for the Covenant through the uh, scholarship then you have to go to the other side of the school and apply for oh, PhD and Spafiso. Mm. So I got rejected, but Alhamdulillah, I'm waiting for their final decision, whether they can put my name in reservation list till, till next year or this year, November. I'm mm. hoping for them to put my name in reservation list since i have passed the technical stage and the nomination stage inshallah, inshallah. Oh, so thank you very much uh Zaytun, for being with us and sharing your your, your experience and uh, i think this is uh, another uh, we can learn from it sometimes when you you applied you applied if there is no success you, you cannot just stick in one place if you can then you can try to see other opportunities in Nigeria also, for example, apply for a master's if you can, then at least you are moving forward. Uh, so I think that is uh, another good idea also. So thank you very much. Uh, now we move to our next speaker who is Abbas Sani, who is hailed from Kano State and uh, a graduate of uh, computer science from the University of Kano. Currently, a software engineer at Introvert Limited Research Interest. Uh, uh, Introvert Limited. So, uh, Abbas Sani, are you here with us? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, good afternoon. So, uh, yeah. we would like to hear from you also, Abbas. What are the struggles and what are the challenges you faced? 
Okay, sir. I, I think it's so good that I guess uh, it's already mentioned by by previous uh, candidates. I applied for about, I think, about 50 <laughs> scholarships, but all of them are unsuccessful. You said, you said 50, like five zero? Uh, yes, sir. Wow. I did. I think yeah, that's five, I've been applying, 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 but nothing. Mm, and I think, wow. and for my own perception, I think it is because I don't have those uh, English tests mm. and yeah. Mm. But 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 uh, there are some countries that doesn't need an English test. Have you tried applying, for example, like Asian countries? Yes, I have applied Turkey. Some of them have even invited me for interviews, but at the end, they are sending me to get visa. But what do you think exactly is the problem? <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes it's just uh, it's just a lot. You can have all the credentials, you can have all the qualities, but uh, uh, if it's your time, then it's not going to be your time. But uh, don't give up. I think uh, continue applying, and inshallah, you you will get it just like others uh, get it. So, but I will ask you also, do you have a mentor? Yes, I have. Uh, and I think one of my mentors is uh, Ibi member of Kamji. That is up by Ibrahim Ramadan. Okay. He's, yeah, he's mm. nice. mm. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think it's time was for for guidance. And inshallah, we hope through these uh, programs and with the advices that we will hear from our uh, scholars and mentors, inshallah, we will. I think it will uh, improve our skills and experience, and also it will guide all of you uh, in your future uh, applications. So thank you very much, uh, Abbas Sani. So I will move to our next uh, speaker, which is uh, Gali Mansur. Uh, but Gali Mansur, he is not uh, uh, currently. He is not an applicant. He is. Uh, successful applicant. Uh, currently, he is a MSc candidate at the Department of Cultural Chemistry and Polymer Science, Chilalongkwe University, Bangkok, Thailand. He recently got uh, uh, his scholarship to, to, to study there. So I think we would like to hear some of his struggle also, and then uh, what are the uh, the success also. Uh, Gali Mansur, are you here with us? Gali Mansur. Yes. Okay. Yes, Bahari. Okay, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Uh, so, thank you for. So, Gali, recently you have uh, a security scholarship, uh, which is fully funded from uh, Chilalopkan University, Bangkok, Thailand. So from before you get the scholarship, then what are the struggles? Did you just, you just in one tech, you just apply and then get it? Or also you went through some uh, some kind of struggles? Thank you very much, uh, Gamji Educational and the Mentorship Forum uh, for organizing this webinar to share my personal challenge on scholarship application. Uh, Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here. And uh, indeed, uh, while it, uh, the story is very long one, but uh, I can say that I can summarize it in just uh, two to three parameters, mm. uh, which is normally uh, the journey start just last year around February or March, uh, when an academic staff union of the University of Nigeria uh, in back on total and the independent nationwide strike. So in it, uh, before, before I am start, I already enrolled into MSc program in Bayaro University, Kanu. But when the ASU in back on strike, uh, I come with a conclusion to start applying for a scholarship 
and uh, already I have a mantra of applying a scholarship, but what motivated me and catalyzed my uh, ability is this strike. Uh, and I come with a conclusion to apply, to just got an international passport, and I got it, and I, I just write, well, let me say, a mini proposal uh, to send like 10 applications within like two months and wait for the and wait for the feedback uh, mm. the story start like that i did like eight or oh, i think nine but i'm not too sure whether i complete the last one yes unfortunately the, the completed application is nine is eight and uh, among eight I got one from Chula Longcon, and I also got one with a condition in Michigan Technological University, US. Mm. So that is the story that. Wow, wow, that is a quite a success one. You apply eight in one tech, and fortunately, you get a one. So that's. Everyone has his own different story. We just hear from the Abbasani that he applied to to, to 50. Yeah, wow. So uh so when when how do you feel when you when when you got it and then uh why do you decide to to abandon the you know, even though you told us but now the strike is already back on uh like they are back to school so why do you still decided to abandon the the one in nigeria and then come to chilalanko okay the reason is obvious to us uh, uh due to the number one uh on centralization of academic calendar <laughs> mm. i think is the major one and uh let me see like uh wicked supervisors <laughs> Uh, this one is among, and uh, unfortunately, when you go to the diaspora, there is a lot of opportunity, and you learn a lot. And I, I'm still learning a lot. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm improving for sure. I'm improving. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, 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 one last question: is How do you feel when you come to uh, Chilalakon? Did, did did meet your expectation? For example, do the study? For example, when you come, you were uh, how can I say? Uh, you are an eager to study your study. Then, when you start, how do you find it? Like, is it difficult or everything is going fine as you expected? Yes, actually, somehow fine, but somehow difficult. But uh, in any way, uh, uh, education, or let me say, education is not an easy. But what makes it difficult for me? Or some how challenging is due to the fact that the Thailand is a non English speaking country. Particularly, if you take me as an example, I'm doing masters by research. It is non coursework uh, program. And uh, what, uh, is the, what is the reason behind this is due to the lack of uh, faculty members. Who are from who study outside uh, Thailand? Mm. I, I see, I see, I see. That's, this is how wow, that's a quite a one, but uh, it's fine. I think with time, like you can manage it and you can finish your. So I think one last question is uh, uh, during your applications, how helpful the mentorship is to you for your applications? Okay. Actually, uh, during uh, application, uh, mentorship is very, very important and crucial, particularly when it comes to online application and the searching for supervisor. You know that uh, normally if you have a supervisor, uh, you have a, let me say, 50% or 50 to 60% of for the of the possibility of getting a scholarship right mm. so i after i had been admitted uh i start thinking of what to do 
uh, I go to the and I ask my I ask the uh, program co coordinator to send me the names of the faculty members so that I can apply so that I can request for supervision. You see what is your appeal? I told him that I want to do so 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 analysis on cat normally catalysis catalysis. He says, so we have one professor who is expert in catalysis, you can contact him. So in the night, I contact the person, but he, and he responds to me that he has no space for now. But he has a, he has an, he has an, he has a student who will finish next year, but, and then he organized a meeting with me. So he, we did an interview. He asked me why I choose him as a principal investigator. I told him that I go through your, through your, let me see, what do I call it, through your profile. And I found your research so interested and aligned with my future career. So with that, he accepted me. And uh, after now, we are doing good with him. That is perfect. Okay. So congratulations and uh, thank you very much, uh, Dali Mansur, for sharing your journey with us and we wish you a successful journey in your uh, master's uh, study. Thank you. So uh, this is, we come to the end of the first session, which was uh, interaction with the uh, struggle. Yes, sir. D Hello, Dr. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, if, if we have a time now when our mentors finish their feedback, so I have some important uh, experience to share with our colleague, uh, young applicant, which will be, I think, very beneficial mm -hmm. to them. Okay, 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 then we will uh, come back to that. Or if it is not that long, then you can quickly share with it, then we move on. I know, so after the finish the Okay, 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 then we'll come back to you later. Yes. Mm. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Then our next session is the uh, introduction with our Abul scholars and uh, and our mentors, uh, uh, where we can uh, hear from them what advices they can give to this uh, struggling applicant, and then uh, what are the tips for a successful uh, scholarship application. So our first uh, speaker is Dr. Abdul Hamid Babatunde Oladi, which is uh, a research professor at Kyungpuk National University, uh, South Korea. So uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid actually is a very dedicated uh, a mentor where he has helped over 40 Nigerian students in securing scholarship in South Korea, like over 40 Nigerian students, which is uh, really very uh, impressive and uh, we applaud you for that, sir. And from him, he has a uh, experience in. Uh, he has been in so many places, which is responsible for uh, choosing a scholarship candidate. So from him, we will hear what are the what are the scholarship selection process, and then what are the criteria in choosing qualified uh, applicants. So, Dr. Abdul Hamid. Uh, I, I can see you uh, here with us, so you can uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for being here uh, with us, and the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, we can hear you loud and clear, sir. Okay, it's uh, first and foremost, I, I say thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be amongst scholars. Uh, my name is Abdelhamid, I'm from Kwara. So automatically, I'm from the North. So uh, I'm, I'm presently in South Korea. This is my seventh year in Korea. And Alhamdulillah, everything has been going on fine. But one thing I want to say is that he said I've brought in over 40 uh, callers. It is not just me. Uh, other scholars too have been bringing. So the 
the what's it called credit is not for me alone but for mm -hmm. others as well and the overall credit goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i thank him for that so uh without wasting much of our time i've listened to what most of the scholars have said and what i can just say in the brief is that when i interact with any student and they say they want to come to korea or maybe any other place i i, I get scholarship information about is what i look number one thing that i look into is the person's dedication how dedicated this person is we have to understand one thing we are all nigeria irrespective of our tribe or maybe the region or anything uh the mentality of going outside of nigeria and maybe start plugging money from tree just a, uh, an hyperbole word is more reason why most people wanted to leave nigeria we have to be frank with ourselves so i look at someone is it the kind of person that just wants to leave nigeria because they always believe nigeria is good because i will never use my mouth saying nigeria is bad so is does that person wanted to leave nigeria because of that or does he want to leave nigeria because he actually wanted to uh further his education because these are two different criteria these are two different things you might be the first class or the best student in in your university not in just in your department but you might not have flair for research if you don't have flair for research take it even if you have a first class and someone that has a tutu approached me i'm going to go to that person because the essence of doing research is not about you uh, having a first class in your undergraduate most of us the courses we choose while we were back in nigeria maybe our dad our mom or our brother's uncle choose this for us or maybe the university decided to choose the course for us we all understand what i'm trying to say mm. so but for you to now sit back and say okay now after i've gotten i just want to use this maybe uh, biochemistry bsc biochemistry or bsc civil engineering then i want to proceed and have a master's in civil engineering definitely you have gotten a flair for what you are doing then you want to proceed so that kind of person is someone i i i see as uh a research oriented student that actually wants to study for that and i will like i said earlier i will choose that person more than the person that even have first class but because because i've i've seen so many people the first thing they will be telling you is that uh i graduated with first class i graduated with two one i graduated with two two uh, boastfully i see maybe that is just everything that entails when it comes to the issue of scholarship but that is just part of it yes your first class is going to take you very far you are going to be selected but imagine you being selected and the person they are very eager to hear what you want to say because they hire your results they hire the expectation from the from the person that want to take you or maybe the lecturer or the professor as the case might be and the first class student is not that coherent it's just incoherent why speaking or maybe doesn't even understand what uh, the professor is doing or what the lab is all about and someone that has a two one or two two can boastfully or maybe uh talk about what the professors is doing perfectly the professor will go for that why i'm saying this is because most of us here that are looking for scholarship if you have the best results please try and understand what you want to do not that maybe because you just want to travel out or maybe because of this so that is number one thing another key thing is that i always look whenever i want to select maybe uh in nigeria for any professor here in korea or maybe uh, my research collaborators in Australia or Canada is that I, I always look at someone that will not taint the image of Nigeria. That is another important factor that is to be considered. Yes, we are all Nigerians, but wherever you are in life, there are some people, there are some Nigerians that have worked or toyed in that particular country or state or wherever it may be. And whenever a professor sees your, uh, what was it called, your resume, 
aside your name, the next thing is going to look at is that we, where is this person coming from in Nigeria? And for him to have gotten interest in you, there are some Nigerians that he has seen before. That's they have maybe done something that is very, very good. That so you will not come and spoil what others have done. So this is another key things that most of us should look at. And how is a professor going to know maybe you are that kind of person? Uh, is it is easy for every one of you now to just go good my name. You you know everything about me. The word has, is the word is connected now. So don't be surprised whenever you see it, you you approach the professor. The next thing is that the professor will just check Abdelhamid Owolabi is going to see where I say something good about my country, maybe something bad about my country, something that is not supposed to be said. In fact, I've seen so many reasons why so many people were, de uh, what's it called, denied US or Canada Canadian visa because of the way they, they uh, interact in sh on social media. This is very critical. That is another key factor that I want scholars to look at. You'll be surprised you send message to some professors they will not even respond to you your message does not go into maybe uh what was it called junk he actually sees your message but he, he is going to do some background mm. check on you to see if there's someone that is going to be of high repute mm. to his laboratory i will i will keep repeating it it is not all about you having a first class a two one or a two two or a third class no yes please go on for first class that is no doubt about that, that. But at the same time, your character comes like this I finished from University of Illinois. Uh, the alma mater, sorry, the motto is probitas doctrinas. The meaning is that worldly in character and learning. So it's not just about learning, you have to be worthy in character, probitas doctrinas. So uh, that is another key thing that I personally look towards and most professors that I've seen look towards. For instance, a professor approached someone uh, maybe two or three weeks back now. You couldn't imagine that the professor specifically asked for a Nigerian in my school, that he, he has a, an opportunity and doesn't want to take any other person from any other country but Nigeria. Wow. So, imagine this is because we have a large population of Nigerians in my school, one, and those that have toyed or that God has used to go to at least uh, set the pace in, in in the school they have done something that at least it is worthy of em, uh, emulation so it it is going to be easier for uh any nigerian to come over before maybe six years back for instance we have pakistanis indians only just maybe one or two nigerians in knu mm. but now we have the uh, let me say the highest black uh what's it called candidates students Coming. Mm. in mm. high school so this is another key thing that you just have to be worthy in character which is very very key to. then another thing yeah. is that the way you uh approach your your study plan or research which is another key thing yes you have a first class you have a two two like i said your character is very good but at the same time when it comes to writing research you don't have any background let me tell you the truth i will choose someone that has a 2-2 two -two and has maybe one com uh, publication either conference or even local journal and compared to someone that doesn't have a publication for maybe masters if, mm. if you as uh and it is easy for us i know it is not that easy based of where we are coming from to at least have uh, a publication you can have that is why um uh, mr barry has been saying mentoring is something that you every one of us needs so when you move closer to someone that is in your field it is easier for that person to collaborate you collaborate with that person rather and in doing that you have your paper even if your name is going to be in the second the third and the fourth so just having a, imagine i have uh, a two two mm -hmm. and i have one paper and i'm i'm applying for the same thing with uh Mr. Buari, he has first class and he, ha he doesn't have a population. Okay. The truth mm -hmm. is that any reasonable professor will go for me because 
That's true. The essence of me coming is to carry out research and how is professor going to prove to the funding uh, agency that gave him money to sponsor you is by bringing out results. And how is results being produced? It is by writing paper. So it is, be, it is going to be easy for that professor to now look at, okay, I'm just, just going to brush Abdelhamid Hall, but now taking Buhari, I'm going to start from the beginning. And the professor doesn't even have that. Just the truth. So please, if you are still, uh, even if you have finished, you are looking for opportunities, try and collaborate. You can bring out research paper from your thesis, uh, your, your master, your, sorry, your bachelor thesis. Yes, yes, you can bring out publications there, you collaborate. If you don't know how to write it, you you, you seek advice from people that are, that are in your field. It is not even a must that someone is in your field be, be, before he or she te teaches you how to write uh, a research paper because it has a lay down rules and it has a structure. So this is another key things you should put into place. I've talked about uh, having a good result uh, um having a character good character and having publications now now that now comes up to uh research plan or study plan as the case might be depending on the country you are applying to now in writing a research plan you are coming to my lab and you are telling me that and in my lab um what i'm doing is that i'm uh, I, i'm studying on how to um, maybe uh harvest yam for instance and you are coming you are telling me you want to do a project on how to harvest maize so how are you going to know that I will, I will take you i will not even consider you because i wrote a proposal by myself and the agency funding me they are funding my research based on that i will write research paper or maybe improve the technology on the harvesting of yam and you are coming with all oh, you all what you want to do. Okay. what you wanted to do what you wanted to do is that on how to harvest maize yes you might see someone that is going to take it if that funding that kind of funding is a general funding and the professors want to mm -hmm. diversify but in a situation in which the professor is has written some of the research or some of his research interest on his website i think the best thing for you is to tell the professor what the professor wants to hear most of us are married here before we got our ideas we told them what they want to hear that's just the truth yes you cannot tell an ajia before you marry her that when i marry you i'll start yes, to you. yes so i'm just trying to cite an, an, an example for mm. us to understand so and how are you going to know that you are going you have to get yourself acquainted with the professor's uh research maybe by through the google scholars through research gates and through um the professor's website and another key things that i think most nigerians doesn't make use of is linkedin linkedin is very very good especially if you are looking for uh research uh what's it called scholarships so i think another thing is because when you are linkedin you meet with people of the same sphere these people that share your idea uh, from there, you are going to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with some professors. Maybe the professor just re uh, published a paper and you have been following the professor. All you just have to do is just congratulate. And maybe when you read the paper, you just put one or two ideas that, oh, this paper is good and this, and I have interest in working in this research. Every one of us, what, what you just need to do is just know how to brush my ego as a professor, for instance you we, we for you to have uh, your way with any professor try and brush the professor's ego so when you pro brush the professor's ego that is how you are going to get things done with the professor so this is very key uh to know how to write research uh mm -hmm. proposals so and let me tell you one thing yes you might think oh no no i cannot diversify i said i wanted me on how to plant this get the scholarship first get to the school first now you can now sit down and tell the professor when you now get there that yes uh professor i think maybe if we can add maize 
harvesting to our uh, your research area i think it is going to be good don't say that be where why you are still in nigeria so get there first and because the, now the professor is now going to look at you that wow this, this is someone that is coming from nigeria i'm bringing new ideas into my research because most professors now what they call their lab is multidisciplinary so most of them wanted to do something that is special and bringing in collaborations from different spheres so i think uh, i should not waste much of our time because i've spent more than 10 minutes like so so uh that is my then the last thing mm -hmm. i want to say is that please stop focusing your attention in on us alone what you are looking for in like the yoga bars we say what you are looking for in shokoto is right there in your shokoto so meaning that what you're looking for in in us is right there in canada is right there in germany is right there in in australia so don't stop focusing your attention on uh us because what you can get in us you, you can show even in japan japan is one of the best country that that has high quality yes. research germany and australia i don't want to mention korea mm -hmm. so it won't be as maybe because i'm in korea i'm trying to at least mm -hmm. hide korea but when it's come to yes that is it but when it's come don't stop focusing your attention on just us alone when if us is your final target why not apply for masters in even thailand someone someone I, so as if there is a brother in thailand from thailand you you get your re desired uh, research results and you apply directly to us you get it since the us is your final destination thank you so much for having me thank oh, you thank Bye -bye. you very much uh dr abdul hamid Olagi. wow this is a powerful uh uh message and then advices and guidance you give to our our applicants so uh, we will uh, we learn a lot from being dedicated and then being good ambassador then try to uh, do some kind of research and then align your interest with the professor's interest and then finally diversify your your target countries thank you very much uh, uh dr this for your schedule and and be with us uh, here today to share this powerful uh, message. Thank you very much. So our next uh, mentor is uh, Dr. Muhammad Chutiami, who is a lecturer at the School of Nursing University of Technology, Australia. Uh, uh, Dr. Chutiami is a dedicated mentor and uh, he's uh, all our mentor. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure like we will learn a lot from uh, from him. Uh, and Dr. will talk about, uh, based on what we hear from our applicant who talks earlier, uh, we, Dr. will give some advices uh, uh, to them based on the challenges and the experience they, they have had. Then Dr. will give some advices uh, to them and then how to go forward from now on. Uh, thank you, Dr. The floor is yours. Okay. Um. Thank you. Uh. Somebody called Mustafa said he want to talk. Can you talk now, or you wanna wait? No, I finish? think we should wait till we finish. Okay. Mm. Okay. Salam alaikum. Then you can say um, it. You can write it in the text. Otherwise, we will entertain question and answers at the end. Sorry, Doctor. Go ahead. Okay. Salam alaikum warahmatullah. Uh, my name is Muhammad Shukiyani. I am from Yorba State, and uh, I'm, I'm currently in Australia. I finished my PhD there, and Alhamdulillah, as soon as I finish, I got uh, to be a lecturer in one of the universities. And uh, it's a privilege for me to be here with you today to share a bit of my experience uh, based on what many of you have said so far. So, of course, I know always time is not by the side, so I will just go directly uh, into it. So, um, I was able to pick some of the, or most of the problems listed by the applicants earlier. So, just before I start going through them, I just want to say one thing with respect to what Dr. Abdul Hamid have said, and that is applicable to just applying for master's and PhD. 
So I know Dr. Abdulhamid had emphasized again and again about the importance of uh, research. So if I will just add one thing, I'll leave this meeting, is just to tell you for those who are looking for master's and PhD, anything else that you have can be, can only help you up to let's say 10 to 20%. So for me, research is like 80%. Wow. So all the problems that some of you have mentioned earlier, is not actually what you think, trust me, to any supervisor, if you can present to him or her with a very good research, irrespective of your other things, your chances of getting accepted is very high. So that is just to add to what Dr. Abdul Hamid have said. So the question now will be like, how will I get into research? Because I know I didn't know research when I was in Nigeria. I only started doing research when I went for my master's in UK in 2015. That was my first time and Alhamdulillah now a lot of research I'm able to do. So what I want to say here is, I will just give you one example. There is one lady, I still don't know her. We met online on LinkedIn, which is another thing that Abdul Hamid have said. She talked to me on LinkedIn about four years ago. So even before we started this mentorship forum. And uh, at first I like kind of ignored her, just trying to uh, thinking she may not be serious to just waste my time. But then I have seen how eager she is and she keep pushing even if I ignore her message, she sent another one, then suddenly my attention get back to her. So to cut things short, this girl with the little support we had, she went to UK first to practice nursing by the way, my background is nursing and public health. And from there, we were able to get her to America. She's in the University of Massachusetts. Wow. She's doing her PhD. So how did she go? Wow. She didn't have good research. She struggled like most of you here. But what she did, which is very fascinating to me, is she tell me, OK, I want to go. What do I do? Then right there, and then I told her, research is very important. If you don't have research, your chances is just like close to zero. So she said, then how do I do it? This girl, she is so dedicated that um, I tested her. I just say, okay, because we are in the same field, okay, how about studying this kind of research? It was a systematic review. And then before, you know, I thought she was going to take like a two months, three months to get back to me. And then in less than 10 days, she came back to me with huge amount of work. I couldn't believe it. Somebody who did not know how to do it with the little guidance that I had given to her, mostly just links for her to study how to do it. She came to me with huge amount of work. And since then I was like, okay, I think this girl she's in business. And since then, right now, if you go to my research profile, there are a few publications that I did with this girl. Wow. And there are some great projects that we are still doing despite the fact that she's in the US. And don't forget, till today, I have not seen her. We met on LinkedIn, until today she is there, I am here in Australia. God knows if we can ever meet in the future. So please, if you are looking for PhD or master's, especially master's by research, which is the most common one, um, even if you think you don't know how to do research, get somebody. It could be a mentor, it could be your lecturer at your university, just uh, see some of their research papers, try to do something similar to that with their guidance. Of course, we don't have time to dedicate too much time to put you through, but with little links, with little guidance, we can see how far you want to take it, how much time you want to put into it so that you can be able to do it. And that is going to help you in so many ways. So that is just about research. So some of the... Um, challenges that I was able to pick out was um, one person uh, from the comment mentioned about age limit. Of course, certain universities will have a um, problem with age limit, but I can guarantee you that is not the case in many universities. I came to Australia. I, um, I got a scholarship here, and in fact, age was not part of the criteria. I didn't see anything like age. So when I started up my application for PhD, I applied three universities, thank God I got only three universities, and none of them did ICH. I don't know about Korea, but uh, the other one is Australia and New Zealand, H is not a factor. So meaning to say, if 
when university has H as a factor, please try to diversify and go to another one. So getting to our, another challenge, I think the first speaker, I'm not sure if he has done masters. I can't remember his name. Uh, who first layman, I think. Yeah, did he do masters no, no. or just from BSc to PhD? No, no, no. He was trying to look at uh, find scholarship like uh, you know some scholarship give uh, direct from uh, to PhD with bachelor they can give you like integrated one um, uh, masters together with PhD. He was looking for okay. that. He okay. only has a bachelor. Degree. Okay, 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 okay. So if it is integrated, it's okay. I thought it's that theory of you know if you finish your bachelor's degree with first class, you can go to PhD. Mm -hmm. Of course, Abdul Hamid have emphasized again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can be the best student in your university or in your entire state, mm -hmm. but you may have you know very low profile in terms of research. Okay. And when it comes to masters and PhD, you can deny mm -hmm. that. So while that is a good approach, I will say um diversify your option try to go for the masters by research and uh, a lot of countries they do that i have somebody from thailand that mentioned he's doing masters by research even in australia we have that and uh, a lot of people they actually have their energy somewhere else but to raise their chances of getting phd scholarship they decided to take the one year research uh, masters by research which automatically transition to phd depending on your performance so um if you tried the joint one did not work so please try to look at the possibility of the uh msc or masters uh, that has significant research component so another thing is the issue of um the english and the gre of course um one problem is it costs money and then another thing is um sometimes they say it's not necessary so i will say if you can afford or if you are able to do please don't go with that idea of it's not necessary because the way this scholarship works especially i applied to australia and new zealand which is more or less the same it's point based so if let's say university want to give 50 scholarship this year so if 1000 applicants applied all of you are going to be scored point and this point is based on what you present. Of course, if you have test class, that will be good, but that's not the only thing. Research has to be there, maybe some of your writing, maybe your English score, maybe you know any other document that is part of the requirement, they're gonna give it point. And at the end of the day, the one that has the highest point, the top 50 with the highest point, they're gonna yeah. get it. So that is why um, if you can, please just do it. You are maximizing your chances um okay the next challenge i think is the issue of the us uk thing which again doctor has mentioned please i know sometimes our mind is always uk us when i went for my masters in uk i didn't even know almost anything about australia but my destiny is here and that is when i learned oh a lot of people are concentrating on uk and us and they're looking a lot of other opportunities somewhere else so please um try to think all of these european countries australia new zealand and a lot of these asian countries try to get yourself there sometimes going to one country will open your eyes to another okay. so the moment you set yourself out of nigeria that is a big plus so you can easily switch to another country so please don't concentrate on the big big countries a lot you can try but try to diversify and another thing I want to say is, which I told many mentors that talk to me, is when they are applying, for example, a scholarship in Australia, they try to go to the top ranking universities, you know, because, oh, this university is ranked number, you know, top 100, whatever. The problem is a good thing to do, but the problem is you may not have what it takes to deal with the competition. Anywhere you see like top ranking university, it's not like a big, big deal because um, at the end of the day if you have phd you have phd it doesn't matter where you get it so what i want to say here is that a lot of people even from european countries you know from us or from anywhere they apply to these big universities so the competition is super super high so instead even if let's say you want to apply to a usa try to go to like other universities you know with less competition so that your chances can be higher unless if you know you have a lot to prove yourself 
So that is just a little addition to it. So, and then somebody, I think from the comments says, I got nomination, I got endorsement from the university, but no nomination from Nigeria. Uh, of course, um, Nigeria is going to be Nigeria. So I can't say much about Nigeria. Myself, I did try the BAE scholarship in 2017. And that, that was the most difficult trip I had in my life. So um, you can't tell, obviously. I can't really tell whether it's going to be objective or not. I can't tell you anything about Nigeria. One thing I can guarantee to you is international scholarships are genuine and are merit-based. I remember the time I saw the scholarship that I applied in Australia, I was doing something on the internet and then it popped up like an admin. And then I ignore, I open the page, ignore it. And then after two days, I open my computer, it comes back again. And then I fill it in my room without talking to anybody, send all my document and the next thing is I got it. So that is merit based. So uh, okay, for this class- Sorry for interruption. I yeah. think for the comment session, we're gonna be uh, looking at that maybe during Q and A session, so. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, that is better because I try to take a lot. Mm. Okay, so that is what I want to tell this applicant since I started. Please try to uh, look for the international ones. For Nigeria, I can't say much. Okay, let me see if I can add one or two more questions um, and then we can. can argue this time is not interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think we haven't got much time, but I think the other things, you know, as I said, uh, just try to strengthen yourself in that research aspect because i feel like the problem is there mm. and uh, i think if there is any other thing that i did not see right now uh please you can ask when we come to the uh, testing mm -hmm. session i don't think i can cover everything thank you for the yeah. time uh, thank you very much uh dr Mohammed chichani oh, what a wonderful excellent uh, advice i think if i can talk on behalf of the applicants uh, this is uh, really an eye-opener uh, from what we have heard from uh, Dr. Abdelhamid and Dr. Chuchami. I'm sure uh, most of you now, like you have changed your uh, perspective and then your thinking is changing and uh, I'm sure now you have seen some kind of uh, direction in your scholarship uh, application. And especially, especially with the research that you they emphasize like it's, it's, it's really really important as uh, as they said i can remember when i uh, did my masters in india i managed to publish like uh, three uh, papers so when i applied to the korean scholarship then i got the interview from the professor uh, normally the interview it used to last long but when i of the call then he asked me are you Buharlo Muhammad I said yes then he said wow I've seen you already publish some uh, papers I say yes he said, wow that's uh, very impressive and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my lab that's all that's the interview like, within two minutes we finished the interview and then my friend they spent like almost 30 to one hour doing the, the interview what said me from that just from my because he said that I already like uh, published some papers and that's what he's looking for. He's just looking for someone who is able to do his research because all what they can do, do is about research. If you are if you are, you are able, then that's, that's fine. So you should really pay attention to, to what our Abul uh, members mentioned about research. So thank you very much once again. Uh, quickly, we are going to move to the last uh, speaker, uh, the mentor. Uh, please, can you uh, mute your mic? I think someone, some background noise is coming from somewhere. So um, we can quickly move to Dr. Abdul Adir Yusumegoro, who is a postdoctoral researcher in International University uh, South Korea. Uh, uh, he's going to share with us some tips for a successful application uh, process. I mean, what are some tips, tech home tips that 
if we're supposed to help to be successful as uh, uh, let's go over to uh, okay uh, thank you uh, dr buhari and uh, good day everyone uh, my name is abdul kadir yusuf megoro uh, i'm from nigeria from kano uh, i'm here um, in south korea i did my phd here uh, under korean government scholarship uh, which is now called um, global korean scholarship gks uh, so i try to summarize steps for finding scholarship and uh, from the comments i heard by especially mentees uh i try to merge the steps in order to answer some of their questions that uh they might ask in the comment sections and also to emphasize on some key points that might be the reasons why mr x and y is not getting a scholarship or is not getting an interview and also uh kind of negativities from the applicants um without wasting uh much time uh, the first step uh it's not really a step but it's very essential which is finding a mentor that is i i hope like you can jot it down maybe it can it can be like easy for you to remember first thing if you are looking for a scholarship you should find a mentor because finding a mentor is a big shot cut he or she will tell you uh these are the scholarships available and he or she will tell you these are the uh time the requirements and the stages on how to get the scholarship so it will save a lot of time and energy so under finding a mentor some people they just try to send you a message like on social media or facebook uh because they see maybe you live abroad or because they see you live in a country where they want to apply for the scholarship the most important thing here in finding a mentor is you should find a mentor who you share the same field of study and that's what we actually do in gamji when you send us a message we try to attach you with someone whom you have the same field so in case you want to find a mentor somewhere try to focus on someone you have the same field of study second category of finding a mentor is that you should find a mentor in a country you have an interest this will save you a lot of time and energy for example dr chutiami uh gave us a classical example with uh, one of his mentees who happened to got a scholarship in in the us that's what she did she focused on the field of study also i have a mentee who contacted me now he's in japan because we share same field of study and i know uh, buhari has some mentees whom he uh, guide because they share similar field of study so that's how you find your mentor uh item number 2 in like securing a good scholarship is that you should identify your profile strength know your profile first are you first class are you 21 are you 22 based on this you can identify your strength then you can know okay based on my profile i can apply for this kind of scholarship or based on my profile i can apply for this kind of uh, scholarship if for example your profile is not good enough then you should think on how to make it good for example someone with first class think his profile is good enough while someone who is too to think his profile is not good enough but as dr abdul hamid mentioned someone who is too to can end up getting a scholarship in a good lab better than someone who is too one so how does that happen is that when you identify your profile then you upgrade by making publications if you have too to don't give up try to make publication it will like fill the gap yeah then uh item uh number 3 you should before you start making the application you should make sure you have the basic requirements 
uh, I have encounter with some um, mentees. They already applied for scholarship, but they don't have passport. Or they already applied for the scholarship, but they don't have English. Or they want to apply for a scholarship, but they don't even know about like statement of purpose and proposal and all that. So before you start your journey, make sure you have at least four items. Passport, your transcript, if possible, English exam, then those uh, personal statements. So make sure you have these uh, basic requirements for application before you start thinking of applying the scholarship. Uh, already someone talked about English. So I put it as a basic requirement because we cannot focus on US or countries that like exclude Nigerians. Yeah, I'm just talking like in general. Uh, item number four on how to square your scholarship is you should focus on country scholarships first. Those scholarships should be your priority because they usually have large uh, number. For example, when I say country scholarships, we have Chinese government scholarship, global Korean scholarship, Japanese uh, government scholarship, I think Th Thailand uh, government scholarship, those kind of scholarships that are like sponsored by the government because uh, in most cases they have uh, large, large slots. For example, I know uh, for Korean government scholarship, they give up to 15, I think, Buhari, right? Up to 15 Nigerians. Yes. Chinese, yes. Chinese, I, I don't think Chinese, they have like uh, the limited number. So, yeah. yeah. They're giving up to more than 1,000. Yeah. So you should focus on those kind of um, scholarships. Yes, Director. Even uh, Thailand government, they give up to like more than 15 people. You see? So, when you do that, it will it will increase your chance of acceptance. Also, uh, <clears throat> number five, you can have non-government scholarships as your alternative. When I say non-government scholarships, it, there are uh, professor scholarships and other organization scholarships that like uh, give few number of people, but it's easy to get compared to the uh, government scholarships. So you should also like have these kind of things as, as, as a backup plan, non-government scholarships. Item number six on securing a scholarship is you should contact professor on daily basis. When you have all what I mentioned from item number one to five, you have a mentor, he guide you, you have the basic requirements. You try to focus on those uh, government scholarships and all that. Then you can have this as a backup plan by sending email to professors. So here, when I say contacting professor, it can be email. Mostly that's more official. But I don't tell you don't call a professor. I did that many times. When before I finished my masters, I I fixed every Sunday for searching uh, for scholarship like uh, search. Every Sunday of my life is just for searching scholarship. And what I did, I have my book. I search for professor. I read his profile and I take his phone number. So after sending email, you can also call a professor on his personal number. You introduce yourself. In most cases, the secretary will take, will pick the call. Or if you are lucky, the professor will pick the call. You can do that. It's not like, uh, it's not prohibited. And he will not insult you. He, I think he will be happy. I did that personally many times. So you can also do that. But make sure, make sure you focus on the timing on when to call the professors. Also, while sending the email, mostly people, they tell me, oh, Abdul Kader, I send many emails, but no response. Yeah, you can send, believe you me, 100 emails without getting a response. It's normal. 
But the thing is, mostly people miss this important point. Before you send a professor email, you have to check the country. It's in South Korea. Yeah. Now it's 12 a.m. in Nigeria, which is equivalent to 8 a.m. in South Korea. That's the right time to send an email to a professor. Send him email early in the morning at a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., his country time. The secret behind that is in a daily basis, professors get hundreds of emails. So when professor get hundreds of emails, the time he enter or she enter office, she will start or he will start searching for important emails. And the rest, they will just discard and delete. Or at times, they will check the emails that are on top. So if you send email at those early hours, early working hours, so the professor may have a glance on your email and he or, me, or she may end up reading your email. This will secure you a lot of um, response and all that. I did that when, when, when I was looking for a job, when I was about to finish my, my PhD, this one of my strategies. And I got a lot of response. Even I got interview within one or two days. Because like, I just hit the nail to the head and yeah, it will, it, it will save you a lot of things, really. Sometimes it's not about your CV or your this or your that. Sometimes it's about your timing. Uh, <clears throat> so for the email, make sure you write five lines is enough mm -hmm. don't go and write long email nobody has time to read that even sometimes the professor they forward the email to us okay read check his cv and recommend so professor doesn't have even five lines at times they will not read so just make sure you summarize in as much as possible also attach your cv then attach your transcript whenever you are sending email make sure i do th these three things make it short and precise attach your cv and then your transcript so uh item number number seven is timing i i already uh included it in the number six then number eight mm. sometimes the professors see the email there is a way you can also set uh, your email to see if the professor you sent has read your email. So if he read, then that's fine. He's not interested, maybe. Or sometimes he is thinking about you, but he don't have anything to respond. In that case, follow it up after five days. For example, my email I, I, I make it in, in the sense that when I send an email, it will remind me after five days that I've looked at it, we haven't get a response. Do you want to follow it up? So even if you don't have like this kind of setup in your email, write it down in your book. I sent email on so, so, so date. Write the name of the email so that when you search, you can find it. Make sure you send again after five working days. Same time, don't forget the pattern. Make sure you send it again. This will also save you a lot of things. I did and I got a lot of response when I was looking for job and postdoc and all that. Yeah, now, now item number nine is is is, ton, is is only ten items. Item number nine. Uh, hello. Hello. Learn how to appeal to other positions. For example, if you are applying for masters, you can appeal to the professor that you can also work as pre master student. Some professors they don't believe in your potential so they want to take you for six months or one year to see if you can work then they can employ you as their master student or their phd so you can also write this appealing email 
that you want to work as this 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 uh, researcher before you join the lab as a master's or PhD student. Mostly, mostly professors they appreciate this. They appreciate this kind of thing because when I was looking for a job after I finished my PhD, my own advisor, my own professor told me, if you want to work in company in Korea, tell them you want to work for six months before they can give you a, uh, a job. She told me like, this is how some companies want to employ someone. They want to see his potential, then they can give him a permanent job. And I did that, I got a lot of uh, response. Uh, item number 10, never focus on one country. People have this kind of obsession of UK, US, what I did, Dr. Chutami, talk about that. So uh, never focus on one country. That's very, very important because uh, by the time you move for master's or PhD, anywhere in the world, you have high chance of relocating. Uh, that's uh, the 10 items I, I, I share with you. And I would like uh, to appeal to you, follow them uh, very well. And I assure you, you will see changes in your applications. Thank you for your time and listening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maiguru, for sharing this powerful tips for securing a successful uh, uh, scholarship uh, chance. Wow, this is uh, really very uh, interesting, and I'm sure uh, the audience and the rest of the applicant uh, just down and I'm sure, inshallah, it's going to change our dimensions for for for, for looking uh, scholarship uh, opportunities henceforth. So I think this is uh, the last uh, uh, speaker. Then we uh, uh, okay. I don't, Galima, sir, we don't have time. But if you can uh, say what you want to say in one to two minutes, please, then we can. I can hand over to, to our host, Galima, sir. Uh, Galima, sir, are you here? I can have somebody call Mustafa who raises his hand. Uh, okay, so I think you, if Galima, sir, is not here, then I will hand over to uh, our host. But before that, I will. Uh, thanks our the applicants who agreed to come here and share their uh, journey and their struggles in trying to apply for scholarship and also our special thanks to our uh, our Abel mentors Dr. Abdul Hamid Olabi, Dr. Muhammad Chutiami and Dr. Abdul Qadir Yusuf Megoro for being here with us and try to guide this uh, struggling applicant and for sharing the powerful uh, uh, advice and, and guidance for 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 this uh, applicant. Thank you very much once again. And uh, Dr. Mbara Muhammad, over to you. Hello. Okay. Thank you so much for this very insightful and uh, very interactive, uh, informative uh, talks, more especially from our Abu mentors. I would, like, I would like to thank you very much for such uh, for having time to really deliver such a powerful talk. So without wasting much of our time, since time is very fast elapsing, we would like to move to Q&A session. Those that are raising their please bear with us because time is very fast elapsing. We are almost uh, two hours now, and uh, the designated time before was one hour, 50 minutes, and we are almost two hours now. So quickly, we are going to look at some of the questions that's been asked. Uh, the first one is talking about age is age 37 years and is applying for MSc. I think Dr. Chu Tiami already addressed this question. Then the second one was asking about what do we need to secure a scholarship? I'm sure what Dr. Abdelkadu said about this also. And uh, I was talking about uh, applying for federal scholarship. Uh, in, he or she was nominated by the country of Nigerian government didn't nominate he or she. So I don't know, maybe Dr. Chutiani, can you please uh, say something about that? Uh, 
yeah, so I think we did mention quickly, obviously, you know, Nigeria, we can do anything. We have no power. So one thing I can guarantee you, as I said earlier, is international scholarship is very objective. So just try to channel your energy towards uh, many other international scholarships. I think that's it. Okay, there's another one that is saying it's also about pedal, pedal scholarship. Uh, he applied for at Comsat University, Pakistan, but the scholarship that he got only uh, cover a tuition fee. It doesn't cover, you know, the stipend and the rest of the stuff. So, Dr. Abdelkader, please, can you say something? Uh, yes, um, Comsat scholarship. I I know that scholarship. I did my master's. Uh, masters from Comsat, uh, Islamabad campus. Uh, so I don't know they have um, different types of scholarship, uh, but if you say it covers only tuition fee, it means I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, I think you are going to pay um, your own accommodation. And uh, it, I think accommodation and maybe some amount of money which is not expensive usually maybe uh, 500 dollars in semester or there about uh, it has been long i did my masters in 2016 to 18 yeah but it's a very good um scholarship compared to other partial scholarships so i advise you if you can if you can afford try to do that and also comsat is one of the top ranking universities in the world uh, so it will it will help you in in your future for phd okay thank you and there's one that is talking about uh apart from kimpad university of petroleum and minerals which institution offers scholarship in economics i'm sure dr chutiani talk about that there are many institutions you have to be following our pc uh available scholarship in economics. And uh, another one was talking about for recommendation later, must it be a professor or someone with PhD? I think I'm gonna throw this question to Dr. Abdul Hamid, if he's around. Dr. Abdul Hamid, I know Dr. Abdul Hamid is super busy, so. Dr. Abdul Hamid, please. Okay, maybe Dr. Chutiami, please. Can you attend to this question? So a recommendation letter, is that like a reference letter that somebody needs to apply for a division or scholarship? So if that's the case, you know, something that you need for your admission, of course, uh, always it's important to get it from somebody who has uh, supervised you or has no, has uh, or know something about your capacity as a researcher. So that will be great, but don't restrict yourself because not everybody is willing to dedicate their time to give it to you. What matters is for you to have the recommendation or the reference if that refers to the same thing. So try to utilize other alternatives, even if you don't think they are as strong as the one that you can get from that professor. So go for other low ranking uh, lecturers or so, so that you have something to present. It's better than you don't have anything to present. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So there is another one that was talking about the is there a scholarship in medicine and surgery? Uh, as far as I know, please, can you? Um, I don't know. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I have never come across with a medicine and surgery scholarship, but we can't say no. No, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, even from the axis of Australia and New Zealand, yeah, if I can is, say. no, because the reason is, the reason is, I'm telling from this perspective, the reason is there are certain exams that has to be done to get admitted into medicine. So it doesn't matter if you are the best student even in Australia, there are certain things that you have to do to qualify. So I think for that reason, we don't have it here. Okay, I think uh, I think we are on time now. So 
we probably gonna wrap up this session now because time is very fast elapsing. We thank you all for joining us and uh, please if there is any question uh before that i think uh there is one guy maybe you can allow him dr Mubara. most of us he do he really wanted to say something i think maybe we can quickly hear from him then we run okay away. mustafa Saidu. sorry can you hmm. yes sir i'm available okay go ahead okay uh thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullah uh, uh first of all i would like to extend my profound gratitude to our speakers as our mentors that delivered this a wonderful and free presentation and advising so we are very grateful and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you in abundance uh please i just have a uh, first first is, is the advice because uh, in our group, Gamji Mutad Mentorship Group, I am in the uh, Telegram group, and there is no distance. It's supposed to be there are some activities in the group. For, for example, at the mentees uh, that are in the group, they're supposed to send their uh, document for the revision and ask something so that the group would be very functional. And apart from that, uh, I'm also a, a graduate school hopeful and I, I have a BSc, uh, BSc in fisheries, that's I read agriculture, fish, bee fisheries, I'm in Borno State University of Meduguri. Yes, I live in Damaturu, I'm now in Borno State, and it is very excited that to announce that uh, recently this year, uh, this month, uh, two, two, two weeks later, I have been uh, appointed as an assistant lecturer at the college here in Meduguri. So uh, I am applying for the scholarship since 2021 during my graduation and the national service at the same time. Uh, I have applied for to some scholarships to some universities, but I get some rejections or love letters. Some people are calling them love letters, yeah. And even got uh, the uh, some partial funding, like University of Stalin, MSc Aquaculture, and the University of Glasgow, uh, MSc Food Security, but it's a passion. That University of Glasgow is just an admission, but that of University of Stalin is the um, uh, partial funding. So I realized that some of the my reason is that I lack mentors for the revision, the review of my document because I have publication now about three publications under review under the proceedings of the Fisheries Society of Nigeria because I'm a member. I have membership of Fishery Society of Nigeria. I have membership of uh, World Aquaculture Society. I even attended their international conference this month that held uh, West, West African conference that held in Abekuta, the Soko Regional Conference. And I have membership of Association of Aquatic Sciences of Nigeria. I also have membership of uh, Civil Alliance for Climate Actions and Borno Catfish Farmers Association. So uh, apart from that three publication, I'm also preparing for my second transcript. Uh, I want to publish it in the international uh, journals. And apart from that, I have some conferences and other uh, workshops, other uh, leadership experiences, research interests, and other distance. So please, I, I, I want to seek for a mentor to review it and uh, confirm my documents, like my SOP, my uh cv or letter of interest or cover letter at the same time so please uh, i don't know that maybe my research interest will be different from uh, most of your research interests in but at least i may get some experience from you yeah and i'm sure that inshallah it will help thank you sir okay thank you uh i think we are on time now so uh probably we're gonna wrap up this yes. session now we would like to thank if you have any question or request mentors. you can send us to our uh, email address or you can contact yes. us through our facebook uh, messenger then we will address all your question and even if it is a mentor we will assign mentor for you if you need a review for your document then you can send it to our email and then we will attend to you inshallah okay dr Mbari, to you. yes yes actually i was gonna say that if there is any outstanding question, please feel free to contact uh, Gamji Education and Mentorship Forum via our social media yes, platform. And uh, like the person has said, uh, feel free to do that. And, uh, 
Uh, Dr. Gali, Mr. Actually, uh, Gali, Mr. We don't have time. I called you and you were not available. So I think maybe we can try, we can sort that out later. And we already passed our scheduled time. Go ahead, uh, Dr. Barak. Okay. Any question? Standing question, feel free to contact education and to. So, uh, Chutiani, please, I want to. Uh, I think Dr. Mbarak is, uh, his connection is kind of rough, but uh, I think I'll just take over and that quickly wrap it up. Mustafa said we don't have uh, time. If you have any other further requests, you can send reach us to our email and then contact us through the uh, Facebook page. Yeah. Okay, thank you so and much. So uh, I think Dr. Mubarak already like his network is not good. So on behalf of him, I will thanks all the applicants and then I will thanks uh, all the mentors that uh, hear this powerful uh, uh, message, guidance and advice to us. And then I will thank all of you audience that uh, despite your schedule time and join us in order to listen to uh, this session uh, thank you very much jazakum allah khair subhanakallahu wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi thank you so much we really have dr chitiani please i want to get connected with you please if possible Me on WhatsApp and Facebook, please. Facebook. Okay, or LinkedIn. Okay, thank you. And Abdul Hamid. Oh. Oh, I like it. I like it.